What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Midnight Man. Today is an exciting video that I know you guys are ready for because I'm going to be going over my OBS scene sources settings. We're going to be getting down into the nitty gritty. A lot of you guys that find my channel tend to ask, how do I set up this certain configuration in my settings within OBS? Or how does this scene or source work to display this certain thing in the video? I'm gonna be showing you guys at least how I have my thing set up and then maybe you can correlate that to your own setup. And real quick before we get into all this, I'm sure some of you guys are curious to what computer I'm using to do my live streams. I'm using a MacBook Pro 15 inch 2017 edition with 16 gigabytes of RAM, four gigabytes of graphics with a quad core i7 processor. This is a custom MacBook Pro configuration, which has already been superseded by the 2020 editions, which are even more insane with six and eight cores in the CPU. So if you're looking to do streaming on a Mac, definitely go for one of those machines with a dedicated graphics card, 16 plus more gigabytes of RAM. It'll be a little bit expensive, but you'll be gold. Plus the beauty of using Mac OS, Apple has made it easy to use this application called Bootcamp, which you can split your drive in separate sections so that one part can be running Mac OS, the other can be running Windows OS. Like let's say you're using specific applications or devices that are only compatible with Windows operating system, you can use it still. So that's a little overview of the equipment aspect for running these streams, but let's get into the scenes, the sources, the settings that I'm using in OBS. So I'm gonna break this down for you guys one step at a time. Let's start off with the first scene, which is the gameplay screen with the first source being the Elgato Game Capture HD 60S Plus Capture Card. Let me show you guys my settings for this source real quick. The device is HD 60S Plus. I am not using a preset. We have our resolution set to 1920 by 1080. The frame rate, simple FPS values at 60 frames per second. Input format, I have it at auto, color space, auto, video range, auto. I know on the capture source within filters, I did put a little bit of a color correction on it just to bring the colors out a little bit more and also a slight sharpen. But other than that, I mean, that was it there. And now if we look in the middle where the audio mixer is, we can see that I have my Elgato gameplay audio coming through to the mixer to be recorded on the stream. But something to keep in mind here, guys, if you're using the S Plus, is that your audio won't come through automatically. Every time that I have to start up OBS, I have to start the Elgato Game Capture software up first. And that will make the audio come through, either through analog or through HDMI. I have to set that up first for my audio to be recorded in OBS or even Streamlabs OBS. But if you're curious how I had my settings in the Elgato Game Capture software for this capture card, here they are on screen as well. Now, if we go back into OBS, my second layer of sources within this scene are the Streamlab alerts. So I'll go and you can see my configuration here. I mean, I'm gonna blow up my URL though. I've kind of just kept things very default here, but that source allows alerts to come through such as donations and new subscribers. Thank you, Rock Boy Jazz, for the sub. You're in the video. Who would have known you made it? <laughs> the next source layer here is my face cam, so I can take it away if I wanted to and you don't see me anymore. I just brought it back there. I made it visible. I'll check out the settings for you. Uh, I do use a preset for this one, and I have it 1280 by 720. The next layer above that is the face cam border. So that's that blue square that goes around my picture just so it looks more contained instead of just flowing free. The fifth source layer I have here is the chat overlay. And this is really cool because when people come to the stream and they're watching, and let's say they have something cool to say in the chat, what they say will come through onto the stream itself. My settings for the chat overlay are pretty much exactly the same as the Streamlabs alert, just the URLs are different. Now, how about the two inactive scenes above everything else that I have active? Well, one of those is the item shop animation, which I had done on the Fiverr application where you can go and get people to do work for you, like graphical animations and, and such. And this is what they made when I make it active. Boom, you can use supporter creator code MIDNIGHTMAN55 in the item shop when you get anything. Support a small creator instead of a millionaire, you know what I'm saying? And then we also got the Twitter animation. I can make that live as well so you guys can see that. Follow me at Game Midnight. 
on Twitter. Both of those media sources I've actually synced up with my Stream Deck application, and I'll show you guys how that works in a little bit in this video. Before I show you guys the rest of my scenes, let's finish off with the last two audio sources I have in my mixer. One being the Mac desktop audio, which by default, that won't work. You have to download an extra piece of software to get your Mac desktop audio recorded. If you're on Windows, it works natively, but on Mac, we can't record audio at the system level. I've made a tutorial on this. You guys can check it out in the, actually it's over here, the card right over there and check out that video and that'll show you how you can do that if you're on a Mac. In my case, I already have the proper tools installed, so all I'm gonna do now is select my multi-output device, and now I can play audio through this section. See how there's some audio coming through already when somebody subscribes? So I actually have my Streamlabs audio going through my computer so that it, that can also be heard on screen. So I'm listening to some Spotify right now, boom. And it can all be recorded. Check out that, it's coming through with my gameplay audio so that I could, I could be chilling, listening to music and my gameplay audio at the same time. By the way, shout out to Bryson Price. I found him because he commented on one of my videos. So I guess he's a viewer and shout out to you, man. You make some good beats. The last track down here is the Yeti microphone, which if I uncheck it there, unmuted, my audio is coming through to the stream as well. Just so everyone understands clearly here, it's best to have two microphones. So that way, if you're using the PlayStation, people can still hear you with your headset or whatever microphone you might have plugged into your PlayStation. And then on the side of that, you need a second microphone, preferably a good quality one that would plug into your computer so that your commentary can be heard on your stream. You can't just have one mic because one end of those spectrums, someone's not gonna be able to hear you. Advanced audio settings here. I have no delays or off sync settings set, but I do have my capture card audio set to monitor and output so I can hear my gameplay audio and have it recorded at the same time through my computer. Which, by the way, won't mix with the desktop audio that's being recorded. So for the rest of the scenes, they pretty much just follow the same outline that I just showed you in my gameplay screen scene. I've just kind of moved around the sizing and the location of those boxes within the scene itself. So on the full face cam, here's my full face cam using the 1080p Logitech camera. Pretty cool. I also have the chat overlay and the Streamlabs alert on here, as well as the Twitter animate in case I want to use it. In my intro, pretty much self-explanatory here, it's just one looping graphic. If we go into it, you can see that I'm pulling this from a local file. I'm having it loop. I'm having it restart. Playback when it's active and show nothing when the playback ends, which is kind of relevant. And also close file when inactive, so that way it takes up less resources on my computer. This next scene is brand new. I haven't showed it on stream yet, and I thought it'd be good for when, let's say, I have to just step away for a second, maybe grab some food or whatever. Here is the be right back scene. I know it's it's pretty plain and simple. I also have this triangle graphic set to close when inactive, just so it doesn't take up too much resources on my computer. And why am I so concerned about power here? Well, using the HD60S Plus compared to the HD60S, I noticed that the Plus did take up a bit more CPU power than the S. So to keep things running smooth so that my stream doesn't get choppy or my computer doesn't slow down, just trying to keep the things I'm not using at a minimum. The next scene here is the end stream animation here, which is my main one. So I have my Midnight Man looping graphic next to this transparent image file, which contains my creator code, my socials, and just to subscribe. I have the chat overlay, stream lab alerts also on this as well. The graphic here has just been resized compared to what it is in the intro scene. Next, we have the end stream Fortnite. So usually with this, it's very similar to the other end stream animation, but this one's just Fortnite specific. And I'll be changing this out with a fresh graphic from the new season once that starts. This scene in particular has a video source for the loading screen instead of the PNG transparent image file. If you're interested in creating something like that, check out the card right here, and I go into detail on how to create something like this, but watch it after this video is done. The last scene I have here is my computer screen. So this is just my desktop in case I wanna show something, maybe watch a video with you guys, whatever. Right now, this source is configured to show my big display monitor, so it's display 
number one here. I have it set to show the cursor. As for crop, I have it set to none. The one above that is the main screen, so that's just my main computer screen. So if I uncheck that, that's where you can see my OBS is right now. And then above that is the face cam source, in case I wanna show my face while I'm showing something on the computer at the same time. As of June 2020, those are my current scenes and sources configured within OBS Studio. Way more than you can do in the Elgato Game Capture software if you were trying to stream with that, which is what I originally started out with, but I needed to grow myself a little bit and this is so much better. Just, you can do so much more. The number of settings in the Game Capture software doesn't even come close to what's available in OBS Studio, OBS Live, Streamlabs OBS. So speaking of settings, let me show you guys my OBS Studio settings. So here we go. Let's go into these settings. In general, language is obviously English. I have it in the dark mode. I have source alignment to enable snap sensitivity 10. And you can see the rest here, but I pretty much left everything at the default. In the stream section here, I'm using YouTube, primary YouTube ingest server. Here's my stream key. I can get that stream key when I go to start a live stream on YouTube and I can just copy it and paste it into here. Now for my output, I do have this in advance. For streaming, I have everything set to just one track, X264 encoder. Uh, I'm trying to output at 1920 by 1080. So this is 1080p quality. Rate control CBR. Bit rate is 4,000 kilobits per second. In general, that's a good rate to have your bit rate pushed over to YouTube or Twitch or wherever you're going to stream to. But I have that set based on the speed of my internet. So I'm gonna do a quick speed test here. So I got my download at 52.55 megabits per second and my upload at 5.94 megabits per second. I do wish my upload was a little bit higher than what it is, so I have a little bit more bandwidth to work with. But since I'm hitting that number, I set my bit rate to 4,000 kilobits per second, which is essentially four megabits per second for your upload speed. I wouldn't wanna set it to 5,000 or 6,000 as that would be a much higher bit rate to be pushing out. Even using an ethernet cable directly connected to my computer here, you still have the chance that your internet could dip a little bit at any time and then your stream quality output won't be as nice. This upload speed also allows me to have a low latency stream, which is pretty close to real interaction. I would say about five to six seconds behind compared to what ultra low latency would give me, but I would need about 10 megabits per second upload to be able to do this. Preferably though, I would love to have 15 to 20 megabits per second upload speed. So that way, even if for some reason my upload speed gets cut in half randomly, I'm still okay. The only other setting I've messed with here is the CPU usage preset, which I have set here to super fast as my CPU is pretty good. And plus I have the dedicated graphics to balance things out a bit. For my audio settings, I have my sample rate at 48 kilohertz, channels to stereo. And then I have the auxiliary audios set here instead of the desktop audio as desktop audio can't be recorded. So the auxiliary audio one here is the H260S Plus. You have to set that if you want to get any source audio into your mixer for that. My audio two is the Yeti microphone. My audio three is the I show you, which this is one of the plugins you do install so that you can record your desktop audio on your Mac. Everything else here I have left to the default. Next here in the video setting, I have the base canvas set to 1920 by 1080 because I want to output my stream or any video that I'll record in 1080. Downscale filter, I have that set to by cubic and common FPS is at 30. I do not have any hotkeys set at the moment. Here's a look at my advanced settings. Nothing in particular that I recall changing too much of. Only other thing I didn't mention within OBS is my scene transitions. I use a Luma wipe and I have that duration of that transition to 450 milliseconds. Lastly here, let me show you guys my stream deck configurations. So the first action I have here is a multi-action. I have it set to open up OBS and then the two URLs here of my YouTube live stream and also Epic Dimic Sound so that I can play royalty-free music on the stream. I have the go live button, so if I press this, that means my stream is live. Here are my Twitter and Epic Supporter Creator Code animations. So whenever I'm on the gameplay screen, I can press these buttons and it'll show the media source for either the Twitter or the supported creator code. I have my intro scene, my outro scene. This folder has nothing in it at the moment. <laughs> I'm thinking of things to put in there. 
This is my gameplay scene. Then I have my full face cam scene when I press that button. The tweet live button down here is pretty cool. I can actually configure what I want to say on my Twitter and it'll send out a tweet to my Twitter without me having to do it myself. These next three buttons control the audio output for my desktop audio, the gameplay audio, and also my Yeti microphone. At the press of a button, I can mute and activate any one of these audio tracks. By the way, if you're wondering how I was recording this video, I was using Streamlabs OBS, baby. During these scenarios is pretty much the only time you'll see me using Streamlabs OBS over OBS. You might be wondering to yourself, why do I not use Streamlabs OBS when you have all these different enhanced configuration options and you're just super cool using it? Don't get me wrong, it's a great application, but it's not for me right now. There's a couple things missing. One being, I can't have a thumbnail uploaded automatically to YouTube when I start my stream. While I'm already live on YouTube, I have to go to my channel, find my stream, edit the stream, and then upload the thumbnail. It's just kind of a hassle when with just OBS, I can push directly to the live control center on YouTube, and I have much more control over how my stream starts, stops. I just like it a lot better. The other issue I recall having was that my chat overlay just wasn't working at all. And then the last issue was that my delay was insane on the stream. Like it was so behind, like 40 seconds to maybe a minute behind to when the viewer would see the stream. I would try to edit this and, and get it closer to real time, but I couldn't get it any better than like 20 seconds. And that was with no delay selected in my settings. It, it was insane. So I just said, nope. I'm gonna use OBS. But I think that's it guys. Those are my scenes, sources, and settings that I use in OBS for live streaming to YouTube. If I forgot anything, you guys let me know in the comment section below. And also let me know what you thought about my settings or if there's certain things that I should improve upon because I'm always open to some feedback and some suggestions. And if you're not already, go and hit that subscribe button with those post notifications on so you never miss a live stream or a tutorial around console gaming that you might miss out on if you're not subscribed. I'm just saying. By the way, go and check out the video here if you want to see the recording equipment that I use to make up my live streams and my videos on this channel. So I'll leave you with that. You guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace out. There's something about him that makes a girl want to take him in her arms and...